you've been given the definition of the binary tree, I want you to return the k, uh, the k smallest element in the tree given the root. Does the question make sense? Yes, yes it does. Is it possible I get a k that's like larger than the length of the tree or the how many nodes there are in the tree? That's a good question. So for now, no. Let's assume that I will get k always within the range of the tree. Okay. So in this case, in this case, the maximum k we'll get is maybe four, because you know we have a null value, yes, but you have only four actual values. One really simple thing to do would be to just like do a DFS on the whole mm -hmm. tree, and mm -hmm. then. Um, you'd have all the values there, and then you could just find the k smallest value. Because I don't want to really, um, like I don't want to like go through it and then like, I don't know, keep a stack, or not even a stack, just keep an array of these and then sort that. That would be easy, but I don't want yeah. to do that. I feel like there's a better solution. Um, because that would be, you do DFS, that's O of N, and then you, if you had a, if you kept track of that with O of N space, and then you do N log N to sort whatever that is, that doesn't seem like it's, it's probably, we could probably do better than that. Um, Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. so, so at least just to pick it up, brute force approach, just traverse through the whole array, have them in, uh, through the whole tree, store them in an array, sort them, and then from there, just pick the case smallest, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's let's think through that. I I really like that. I like your cascading approach right there. So let's start with that. So DFS uh, DFS to sort to big gate. That's kind of the approach. So let's let's ask ourselves, what's the complexity for each step? You say DFS is O of n, right? Yeah. So this is O of n right here, and that's both time and space O of n. Mm -hmm. And then this is both time and space. What about this one? Sorting step. Yeah, the sort would be n log n. Uh, n log the n. space. What? Mm, I, yeah, I mean, just to do it, I guess I would use the same O of n space. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't have that list basically if I wasn't using that O of n space. So yeah. Okay, so let's keep it there. And then what's what about this step? How much will it cost? Uh, well, that would be O of 1, just to pick, you know, the kth um, smallest value that way. That's good. So let's think about one optimization. So is there a way you can eliminate the need to sort in the first place? Like other, instead of using DFS, is there a better way of traversing the tree that would avoid sorting it? i.e. traversing it in a manner that's sorted. And in order traversal of the binary search tree, then yeah, that should be, uh, yeah, that should be already sorted. Excellent, that's good. So let's say, let's say I do keep it in, you know, list, then that would be result.append node.value, um, or node.val, sorry. And then a uh, node would be node dot right because then you would want to go to the right. Right. So let me pick it up. So you're going to populate the route of the stack up to the left. So if we think of it from this perspective, we basically go all the way to one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we want to cascade in this regard, pick up the values to the right of whatever values we've picked or we've already added to the stack. So once we finish the left ones, we now start iterating through the values in the stack in order. Although I'm actually, yeah, in the stack in order. So from the top, but we're not necessarily popping them. So it's like if it's one here, immediately after one should be the two. So to some degree, we might even need to modify the order of the stack because, you know, in this regard, three wouldn't come before two, but we might have added three before two. Maybe I, I, I'll give you the freedom to do this. So I'll, I, I totally understand that doing traversal iteratively is a challenging on its own. So feel free to refactor it if you want to do it recursively. 
that's also an mm -hmm. option that will be available for you. And you, you can create another function and then try it out. Later on, if you have time, you can fix this. Yes. Uh, okay, so I'll just, I'll call it helper. Um, so I have a node, and maybe I should, um, and actually, in both of these, I forgot to put the K parameter. Um, so I should have That's okay, that. we can always add that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you're right, and we were focusing more on the traversal for right now. Um, okay. Yeah. And for context, that was actually the core challenge of the question. I, I usually like sometimes, you know, reminding people about these traversals. And so that's actually mm -hmm. the, the gist of all of this, right? Okay. Right. Okay. I'll give, you, I'll give you a quick suggestion. So this is just mm -hmm. a coding tip that I have come to realize helps. So whenever you realize you have something that you need to pass, uh, pass into the helper function, especially something that will be shared by multiple entries, I usually put it outside. So let me show you what I mean. So you can put it here, initiate this as empty, and then in here you can say non-local. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is you avoid having to make copies of this object. I know Python 3, uh, Python 3 later versions have been uh, doing object reference, and so even if you pass it as a parameter, it might be okay, but older versions might not do that, which is really inefficient since each recursive call has a copy of the, has a copy of the right. result. So if you do this, you access the same variable that you have here. It will be accessible in the block of code inside line 59. No dot value. This is wrong. I know this is wrong. This doesn't feel right. Node, right. Do you want me to help you with this particularly? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one. Okay. I'll tell you this. This is pretty much all you need. And then the other part is you can also remove this part. You don't need to assign it anywhere. So let me show you what I usually do. So whenever I'm working with uh, traversals, in fact, I can even say if not node, I can just return none. That way, like, it doesn't uh, confuse it with a value in case there are none negatives. In this case, it's okay. But it's usually a case you set the left, you set the right. And then if you want to test it out quickly, and I don't want to just tell you, so what I'll do here is this. Because I know by this time, node is not empty. It will have a value. I can just do node.value. So let's test it out. If I print it here, and then if I print it in the middle, and then if I print it after, what will happen? That's the question I'm asking myself, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's try that out. So let's call this right here in order. So what do you think would happen if I print it where I'm printing it currently? This will be, okay, so for, first it'll print three, mm -hmm. then, It'll print one, then it'll, well, okay, and left doesn't have a left, so it'll go back into the right. So it'll print three, one, four, um, and then, wait, no, one does have a left. I think it'll go three, one, two, four. All right, let's, let's test it out. Uh, this is actually, Three dot left dot right it should be dot right. You put it dot okay. left, right? So let's look at it one more time. So three, one, two, four. So that's the order. So started with the root and then one, two, four. All right. Okay. So feel free to take over. I know you can now see t uh, see what to do with it. So I want to keep going. Okay. Yeah. So like here, mm -hmm. we could do result. Um, Dot append no dot now, and then here this would be. We don't even have to return anything from that. That would just be return. And then do we have a default return? Okay, so the default return is none. Okay, that's good. E, yeah, um, yeah, and we could, yeah we could return if it, like if we wanted to return something, I could mm -hmm. do okay. I guess I could do like. <laughs> Result equals helper root and then return result if result does not equal none else, like whatever, negative one. This session alone has given you the tools you'll need to solve at least 70% of tree questions because they're usually about traversal. So 
So at least now you have the recursive approach. Obviously, you can practice the uh, iterative one to make sure that also doesn't catch you off guard. But almost everything else was really spot on. So your communication is excellent. Your speed, especially the way you identified the brute force approach, that was good. I really like how you thought DFS. And then from there, you only needed like a small nudge and then you're like, oh, in order, let's think about that. So that was good. So you really didn't take too long to identify the solutions. And that's why at least for me, this would have been a pass. Like if you had you like identified everything on your own, it would have been a strong pass. But given that you really didn't need handholding, so to say, to get it to the end, that's basically what makes me lean pass, which is good.